Hello gamers, here live on YouTube, uh, coming to you during my little break after the stream at home, well stream at home that we call, putting in a lot of hours during the drops for the commanders, and I, I do really hope that you guys um, got everything out of it that you wanted. I want to thank you again here as well for all the support, everybody got my commander, everybody that got, bought a bundle, I appreciate that greatly, that tuned in, uh, subbed, etc. Thanks for all the love man, I do really really appreciate that. Um, as always. Now, continuing on our German train, KPC 50T. We have more Vanka from South, no ID. Uh, f quite a few tier tens to play against, and uh, usually the deciding factor for me here is how many things are going forest. But I see this group of tanks going towards the forest. I may fancy myself some forest as well. We've been playing a KPC, so the thing is, the KPC is a very good tank. It has a very good turret ammo as well. The only downside that I feel for this tank is the fact that it has 320 alpha. Now, uh, 320 alpha is, for me is a is a hard to play with compared to, for example, the uh, E50s uh, alpha. Get a good shot there, though. My Amex uh, 105 really taking a good bush. Finish off the light there. And seeing as the BZ is there, I'm going to assume that their other light is playing around the 1 2 area. So I'm going to push up. Mm, this might have been a mistake, though. I did get spotted. That's not good whatsoever. I'm going to fall back to the building. Sadly, my 105 did not spill this whatsoever. Oh, cheeky shot on the STB running away. Taking another one from the 580, not ideal. Minus quite a bit of HP. That is uh, actually really unfortunate. Something that I did not see coming whatsoever. I mean, he is getting blasted from 1 2 line though. There's the other line, I think, actually. Now, if the 58 would run away, that would be great. I think the 105 is pretty much spotting him now. I actually, have side shots on the stir there. <laughs> Flies right by his cupola. Um, so yeah, like the downside for me for this tank is the fact that it has a bit lower alpha than a lot of me other mediums, and I feel like 320 alpha in general is pretty hard to play, or, pretty, uh, or make a trade, so really, really hard with this, um, to do successfully, but yeah, we're getting some nice side shots on him there, he's in a bit of trouble, um, because of the fact that he did go there, and 1-2 line does ruin his position in the 5A. I was hoping my teammates are able to pick him up, that would be beautiful if they could actually. Um, I don't have a shot on him right now. He actually goes despotted as well. I cannot push up to him though. I cannot afford to push up to him. And to see if I could hit the STB when he's white picking like this. Mm, probably not able to. I did spot the 5A now again, I think. Hoping that somebody's able to pick him up. Uh, it should be ideal if we could. It doesn't look like it though. I might push up against him now. And pick him up. We will have to intuition to heat here though for this. And there's an STI running in the middle of the map. I don't think he spotted us. I'm gonna go spot him and then hope that it works out for me. 277, I need to be careful of. He could shoot me if he has uh, awareness to see if the 5 decided to run away. He did not. Not connecting the Scopola. That's really bad though, actually. Not connecting on that one either. That's just shit shooting boys actually just shoot shooting trying to pick it off it's very important if you do you can see the 277 though is looking towards us 105 is actually clipping us out gotta be careful now we could go safe we will go safe we'll go despotted as well and we'll back off for now as we want to readjust into a position where we can shoot the the forest we're down to 105 ruining our life i need my 105 to come play slightly further up at me if he would do that, I could actually f fire him. Um, but since he's not doing it, this makes it a lot harder. It's STI though, in a bad position. If I maybe could double bush him. Might be possible from here. Got a good shot against him there. So we have one and a half good damage, which is not a great result yet. There is room for a little bit more. Good shot against him there. That's what us out. We're gonna go back to the forest now. We are winning one two quite heavily. Gotta keep that in mind. Um, again, not a great game yet, but there's still fourteen thousand HP left. The main thing here is not to throw. I don't know if the STI is countering me or not when I do this. I'm gonna intuition back to heat here, just right around the corner, right before I'm ready. Maybe I could peek the STI in relative safe. You gotta be careful from the Fortune 263 though. He goes down, that's good for us. We should be able to make work with the bushes here. 
We've got on the Crimson Panzer, the Cobra is gonna. Ooh, and I was actually spotting that myself, even for the Cobra. That's a bad shot with heat, that's just completely my bad again, for no reason. Uh, but yeah, KPZ strength turret is really good. Um, the gun is pretty nice as well. You have this uh, 310 heat, which is more than fine. We're rolling back towards the APCI. And you have this pretty nice APCR with extremely high shell speed though, which makes sniping with this APCR very comfortable because it does have the advantage of that pretty high velocity. I don't want to get caught here by this guy. It's uh, it's not worth it at this moment to really give myself up against the 277, hoping that somebody else would pick him up. I've shot against the 277 though. When he goes back like that, I too. He's going forward again though. Should maybe finish off this guy, but it's really risky. Because there's two TDs in the spot which you have to keep into uh, the back of your mind. 77, backing off around. Shell goes really low there. Um, but that's okay. He goes forward, we can hit him. Might have to snap it a little bit though. We do get another nice shell, 359. And this is the thing with this low alpha guns. I feel like it's really hard to get a high, high damage games. Like, I don't feel like it's that hard to get like a 4k damage game, for example, but like to get blowout games in this feels a bit harder. You can see the shell speed there, it's beautiful, actually. Um, the shell speed is a true highlight of this on the APCR with 1.5. But yeah, holding on this tank is really good. Side scrape, not as much, let's be real about it. Plenty of weak spots to pen. Can anyone getting spotted? Deleted, even. I want to back into mission to heat just for comfortable move purposes here. Looking if I could find the 263 again. I gotta be careful from the first. 263 is not... Uh, it's a good pen on the side. He's looking towards us now. We can take one shot from him, which is okay. We're gonna get these penalty again. Give him one more. 4.3. A pretty good result, actually. I mean, 4k... Kind of the sweet spot here. I don't think this is like a, a tank where you can really easily have... Like I said, I don't think it's a tank where... High damage games come very easily again. That alpha that you have, it's just, it's hard to blow um, a 6k damage game here. Because you need a lot of shots to do it. I mean, I'm getting a 5k out of this though, which is very good. I like it. Uh, but I can't help but wonder, in 50, this would have been like 6k, you know? Just because of the alpha. Would I have been alive or be able to play the same position? Yeah, that I'm not sure of. Uh, Guys in the open, we don't get a shot on him. He might be caught against the Type 61 here during this T10. We'll aim for it. No, he gets picked up by the SRV before. So we got a nice 5k battle and the KPZ. The MM was kind of good as well, though. And we did really utilize that 5 6 line position, 6 7 line position. Um, you always have to be careful from C3 when you play that, which is the 277 that we could see. Low profile tanks are just the best for it because they are, don't expose as much, and KPZ is pretty low profile. Um, so, good game, good game. For this tank, um, like for YouTube sessions, depending on the tank, it could be like 5, 6k. For this, if we manage to get 5k, it would be really impressive, I know. Um, but yeah, uh, my two setups on the KPZ is HP, Stabs and Rammer, and on the second setup I have Turbo. Stabs and Rammer. You could try and experiment with Fence, uh, Rammer and Improved Aiming. But this is just a good old reliable for me. And then in terms of field mods, let's just make sure they're right. Module, module durability, it's very standard. You always pick it just in case your repair kit is a cooldown. And then aiming circle size. Then we go for the reverse speed IMO. And then on this, I have the extra view range, but uh, less um, less uh, forward speed because I do uh, like that extra view range. Like you see that if I remove this and don't take this, it's just 451. I could have neither two. It's fine. It's either right side or neither IMO. Those are your two options there in the KPZ. I would not go for the left one as it is impacting your free range quite a bit too much. Um, it is still a medium, so you do want to have near max uh, free range when possible. Uh, I am recording this in the deep night at uh, 3 a.m. actually. Um, so you guys have YouTube content during my little... Uh, little hiatus from the computer where I uh, plan on just uh, for three days just not touch anything electronic unless absolutely necessary. I mean, I'm going to use my phone probably, uh, but since I don't really use my phone in general, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really a big phone user. Uh, trying to like, you know, step away, 
relax, come back in with a with a strong uh, strong mindset into December to cruise it out till the end of December. Uh, plenty of streams are going to be coming. The drops are also starting again on the fifth. Uh, um, for the tokens, which won't be commander drops, obviously, but will be, I guess, your regular, regular drops. Uh, we get a bit of a harder game here, though. Westfield's coming out. Uh, double ID. Lots of tier nines, lots of tier tens as well. Things to watch out for here is the fact that for some mysterious reason, where gaming decided that they need an Eskunk, uh extra, and we get a Leo in return, which is pretty bad for us. We have the choice here to go play the corner or to go up. Now, we do have better tier 9 heavies, I would say, than them. Not the VZ114, uh, but 257 against FaZe, even Lorraine better than the E1, probably. I could go help my team on the upper side because they may need it. I am all, and I just despise going K-Line in general on this map because I feel like the reliable liability of going K-Line is zero. All it takes the ABR is to YOLO, I spot you, and then the chars are clipping you. It's just like, I hate the K-Line on this map uh, for that reason. It just doesn't provide you with anything remotely useful, in my opinion. And more often than not, when you cross, you just die. Unless you have a lot of people crossing or their light is not playing it properly. So I'm going to be taking my tank to the upper side. It will be a hard fight because, of course, like I said, they have a Kran. We have an AFK VZ114, that's unfortunate. But they have a crown, they have an Eskong, pretty good tanks to play the position. I do get spotted, you always drive in line with the June when you're coming up at your medium for the simple fact that you don't want to get uh, farmed by those guys over peaking. Um, I see maybe potential to go to A3 already, because their team is really not contesting the north. If I take A3, I put the enemy team in an absolute chokehold that they will not like. Uh, my 60 TP is taking an interesting position, there is a slight bit of hold on there. However, I don't think that is really what he's doing. I'm not sure even what he's doing. Um, but since he's taken the distraction of the entire enemy team, I'm going to try and make a play that wins the upper side IMO, which is to cross over. Uh, I might get a shot from the E1 here. I don't want to track him. I'm going to be loading back to his heat. And now I do have A3. And A3, I think we've talked about it before, is an extremely powerful position to have. It is just so goddamn good at CT69 gun on that man. We load heat because of the Eskong roof here as well. And this ruins their heavies. And it's a really good play, and it's, it's a play that shouldn't exist. But it's super solid if you can get away with it. If they're not contesting this heavily enough, I recommend you to just try it. Um, to feel it out if you can hit the timing where crossing is safe. Because when you do, even in an unfavored matchup like this one, it's a crazy shot from the GW actually. Actually crazy. Uh, bad shot by me. When you do take this position, it's really, really hard for the enemy team to recover from. Skoda's blasting me though. Gotta play it a bit careful. And now that we've pushed them in the hole, you can see a Cobra below me. My shooting is awful right now. No, it's really bad. The question is if he's gonna actually even pen a shot. He doesn't have gun depression for this. We do get the average roll to pick him up, that's good. I love Yolo and Cobra, so I can shoot the crown in the back. I missed this, because I'm not fully aiming right now. I'm trying to help my teammates as much as I can. Again, the C1 is not really as much of a threat as you may think. But it's T69 gun, I mean, he's shooting heat, but... Uh, you know, it's still just a T69 gun. I... I don't even know what to say about that shot. KPZ gun trolling a little bit. That one goes high as well. Missing a lot of shots here, which is unfortunate for my team because it would be very crucial that I hit those. I mean, the gun's actually trolling. It's like legit trolling. There's nothing you can do about this. I'm trying to help as much as I can, man, but uh, RNG is saying no. What can I do? Uh, well, and my phase actually died because RNG is trolling. Um, now we're going to YOLO by the T5041. Trying to make it so he doesn't pen. That's fine. Uh, the face is flaming me for being an idiot. If only he knew my RNG, he would understand. The closer I am there to the E1, the better, because then he can't pen my... Uh, uh, can't pen my hull, so... 
I thought I need to kill the Eskwing though, which I'm not sure how I'm gonna achieve because I think the SCRV spots me when I pick this. This is pretty risky. I need to kill the Esco. I can't pick this like this. I need my Lorraine to survive as well. Just speedy, 567. I am spotted. I'm trying to be safe right now because of the man. The issue is the should burn all of this. We're just gonna die. I don't think I can stop him either from doing it if he wants to. Even at two five seven, I can't really stop. Mm hmm. -hmm. What to do? Sometimes doing nothing is the best play. That's a great shot, man. And the GW makes me a one shot for the Kong, I need to hide from him. And pray that somebody else kills him. Maybe the Lorraine picks him up. Right now surviving is the most important aspect of my game. Good stuff Lorraine, good stuff. Thing is, I can't really spot the 257 for myself. Nice, good stuff. Uh, if he should have run down. Yeah, I really play against the 257. As much as I would want to, I feel like it's extremely risky to peek him. I'm gonna try something in the meantime. I'm gonna go over the 3 here to get a slightly better camo spot. Maybe to outspot the 257 if I can. I feel like I really don't know what this man is doing right now in his tank. Awful shot by me. Doesn't look like I'm spotted though. Bring him there one. Yeah, I think the most important part is there that I did nothing. I, I, that was the back of his third, so. I think the most important factor is that I just did nothing. Like, I relaxed. Oh my god, dude, my aim is. Whew. This game has not been the one for RNG. And my aim on top of it as well. Um, I'm gonna be careful now. I know the PTA is either here or he was here to shoot the VZ. Go back to APCR. Reload hash. And he actually hits that. Ah, 4k. That probably shouldn't have been greedy there, but uh, felt like the game was kind of over. You know. That's why I usually don't recommend 320 alpha guns or play them in general, even at tier 10. Um, because of the alpha difference being so large, which I think is another issue in the game, probably. Um, the alpha difference, burst difference between tanks, making tanks like this uh, ammo less viable, harder to play. Um, so let's see our last game here on the KPZ, and we get Rick CCMM, of course. Uh, we gotta make a decision here. Do we go fight the south or do we go for the north? I'm actually not entirely sure which one to go for. I feel like the south is the reliable play, and north is the play that might yield a bit more. It kind of depends on the dispersion of my team. All well, these TDs, there's nothing really scary in this. T95 is scary, but it's gonna take him so long to get to the battlefield. Let's see first. My Centurion's going north, TS5 going north, TD's going north, very little tanks going south actually. Even my TNH is going towards the uh, north, so we take that as a indicator that we should also be playing north. 
It's pointing us to go sa tiny engine turn around, okay. But uh, anyways, I feel like I have enough support to justify going towards this side of the map. Um, you gotta be careful with Skoda and PTA though. But I can play on turret here, uh, on the end. I don't often come here, because I feel like South is more reliable, but this, this MM is one of those ones where you can actually uh, decide to play on the spare. So the Skoda is going there, which is an awful play. It really is just an awful play uh, altogether to do this. I've tried it many times and I've failed it as, oh, almost as many times as I've tried it actually. Um, it's just not good from south. You have to win the upper side from south. So I don't know what the squad is doing. I don't think we can respot him either. Um, I'm gonna check here. There's an issue under 30. He misses the shot. Might intuition to H3 here, if I don't spot anything else. Intuition into H3. The Tiger coming up, not a threat. I don't really need H3 to finish him up, but it's okay, I'm still gonna do it. Maybe peek slightly too early. We don't want to give a, him a damage opportunity, normally. And we did give him that. You always peek when you're basically reloaded, so you minimize your exposure time. You don't really want to take an extra 130 shot if you can avoid it. Right, I think we can all agree on that. So the tiger is just like a free farm. And it's kind of game, you're a bully. You play aggressive, you do not let off the pressure. You try and get as much as you can, when you can. And now I am feeling the base push because it's gonna put a lot of their TDs in the... in a very bad position. And I do have my Centurion with me, so... I'm not feeling afraid. In this MM you have to be a bully. Uh, the worst thing you can do as a top tier in this is to... Centurion's turning it away though. Something to pay attention to. What could be in the base is an ISU 122 and the shit pack, of course. I only really have a KV-13 with me anymore, which is a bit scary. This man is not bouncing us in any of his shots, I feel. Okay, she may be a decent play here, I gotta be careful though. Not bad in the H3 there, it's not good. I only have good results shooting shit packs with H3. Like in general, I just think it sucks. I don't even know why I continue trying it. I just feel like every time I do it, it's just an awful result. I don't really want to repair my gun. I do have armor on this uh, this account, so I mean I should repair my gun. I just can't can't make any like really bad peaks. I can make a bad peak. I can't make an awful peak. Um, so the ISU is in front of me. I want to cross over towards that because it's a good position to have. I can play hold on here and then farm those guys in the in the rear and as well I do spot him out, that's good for my KV-13, enjoy it buddy, the free farm for you. And like I said, the, the worst thing you could do as a top tier, which I see a lot of top tiers make a mistake, is by being very passive um, in an MM like this. In an MM like this you are a bully and you should play according to that. And pushing through the north is indeed a good decision for this as well, when I think about it. Because it's least likely to be met with, because um, I mean, uh, most players realize that uh, one can just shot against PT when I can. Uh, most players realize that uh, on this map, this is usually the winning point, so they go for that themselves as well. Um, but if you push through the north like hyper aggressive, kind of like we did, you really get behind them really quickly, and this is just ideal for us. I mean, we track him as well. Um, Doing a backside shots on the 1085 slash TNH. Give one to that guy. The list might give us a shot, it's fine. We still have HP to spare. Give one, finish off the TNH. Puts us at a nice 6k. Um, finish off the MX. Could have gotten more by shooting the PTA or the T34. I might actually die. There's a good shot that I die here. No, he's, he lost interest, that's okay. So we get a nice 6k battle to round it up, uh, which, you know, puts the average on the KPZ over the games we played, 15-0 by the way, at uh, 5k, which is for me a really good result on the KPZ. Um, I hope that this video gave you some tips, tricks, insight, 
as always to the way i think the way i approach things what i'm going through through the battle and can help you in in world of tanks in terms of positions to pick when and where yes they would have gone south if this was a, a worse mm but north is always an option nice ace thank you there as well on the kpz 6.1 four kills i mean just a good battle and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll see you guys all in the very next one and see you back on december 1st on the twitch in the evening all right Peace,